food prices, energy prices, housing prices have been increasing all over Europe. But how bad it is in Belgium? Hi, my name is Nora. I'm an immigrant from Hungary and I have been living in Belgium for three years. First, I lived for one year in Brussels and now I've been living in Antwerp for the second year. So I'm gonna share my experience with you about the cost of living in Belgium. Let's start with housing. The prices will be kind of different based on the region uh, you are uh, looking for housing in. So for example, it's gonna be more expensive in Brussels. Um, it's also gonna be a slightly more expensive than the rest of the country in Antwerp, but it is still cheaper than Brussels in my experience. And then uh, cities like Ghent uh, or Bruges will be, uh, in my experience, cheaper uh, than Antwerp. So Brussels, let's say you are looking for a studio apartment, right? If you are looking in uh, more central areas, I would say you can find studio apartments from between 700 to 1000 euros a month. This is uh, just the rent. Uh, sometimes it can also include uh, the common costs, but this is something that you have to check with the owner or the real estate agent. I would say if you are really lucky, you can find the studio apartments in relatively central Brussels for 650 or something, but I don't think it goes any lower than that. That's a really lucky find. And uh, of course, if you move more central, like to the old town, to the touristic areas, the prices will grow and you can also find studio apartments for 1500 euros a month or so. So Antwerp, as I said, is slightly less expensive. In my experience, a studio apartment can cost anywhere between 500 to 900 in the central areas. If you go more to the outskirts, it's gonna be more houses and bigger apartments in my experience, but they are also gonna get a bit cheaper. Um, that's not necessarily true in all of the districts because there are some really nice areas in Antwerp like Berchem or Viareik uh, where the prices can be a bit higher because they are really really nice neighborhoods. At the moment uh, we are living in a two-bedroom apartment. It's a pretty big apartment and it's a bit more outskirts than the south district of Antwerp and we are paying 900 euros a month just for rent. But I think also the closer you go to the, the touristic areas, the, the old town, of course, things will get more expensive. However, keep it in mind that if you are moving to Brussels, you will only have to pay two months rent as deposit, whereas in Flanders and in Antwerp, of course, uh, you will have to pay three months deposit. So let's talk about utilities. So first of all, um, we always have a common cost in every apartment building, most of the apartment buildings at, at least. The common cost is basically a monthly fee that you pay uh, in order to maintain the building for the elevator, if it has a common garden and so on and so on. And also it goes to this uh, representative of the building called the Syndicus, which is an organization that is responsible to, for maintaining anything that goes wrong in the building. So this common cost can be anything between 30 euros to even up to 250 euros a month. But if it's this high, then it usually includes your entire unlimited water consum consumption and also your heating and it's also unlimited but you have to be careful with this though because you still have meters and if you if you uh, overstep this um, if you consume more water or more uh, heating at a gas then uh, what is in this provisional uh, amount then they will also increase this common cost for you so gas and electricity, so if it's not included in the common costs and you have to pay separately for it, um, 
it's a bit hard to tell at the moment because um, due to the, the energy crisis, the prices really, really increased last year. However, now they have uh, gone down a bit, not even a bit. It's a lot, a lot, lot, lot better now. So before the energy crisis, I was paying uh, gas and electricity altogether. I was paying uh, 45 euros a month. Then they increased this a bit. Um, and uh, I heard like really horror stories of how much people had to pay during the energy crisis. Uh, and now the prices uh, are a lot lower, luckily. So I can't really tell you my gas uh, bills at the moment, but for electricity, I pay 20 euros a month. So maybe uh, they, will, uh, they will have a look at my meters in a year and they will uh, say that I still have to pay uh, X amount, but I don't think it's, it's that bad at the moment. The internet, it's gonna depend a lot on the provider that you choose. You can sometimes find some really good deals, uh, but it can be anywhere between 40 to 60 euros a month. Uh, I heard from some uh, acquaintances that there are some less well-known internet providers and they are a lot cheaper than this. I have no idea, I will check it out, but yes, just come with, with at least 40 to 60 euros a month and if you need even better internet, uh, then maybe it can be even more expensive. And another thing that you have to pay every month as kind of part of your utilities is the home insurance. So in Belgium, it is the tenant's responsibility to pay home insurance and to sign a contract with the insurance company. So you can do that usually with your bank. You can do it online. It's really easy to do, but just uh, keep it in mind that you will have to pay for this as well. So it can be anything from 16, 20 euros. Maybe it can be uh, more expensive if you, if you have a, a larger uh, house or if you live with more people. Let's talk about food prices. So food prices increased in Belgium as well, uh, just like in the rest of Europe. However, I do have to say this uh, because of the inflation, it was mandatory. It is mandatory in Belgium to increase the salaries of the workers uh, at the beginning of the year. So yes, the food prices and prices of everything uh, increased, but our salaries also increased. So that's I think it's a really great thing. Um, but yes, so talking about food, if you are uh, going to shop in supermarkets, uh, the, the, the key is to, to know where to buy which kind of food. So that's uh, kind of what I do in order to, you know, shop on a budget. There are certain uh, small uh, versions of the supermarkets, the big brands uh, on, on your corner and so on. These will be, of course, more expensive. Um, and if you go to bigger uh, supermarkets, it will be less expensive. Um, I would say that uh, I spend about maybe 70 euros a week on food. So I think that's pretty good, but I'm like a really conscious shopper, you know, I, I shop for the deals and everything. So if you're gonna move to Belgium, um, my, tr uh, my tip is to uh, get the, the loyalty cards from all the supermarket brands and that will give you a lot of good deals. So that's how I do it. However, if you are going to order uh, food, take away, go out, eat at a restaurant, that's gonna be pretty, pretty expensive. So there are some cheap places, of course, if you want to eat like pizza or something, but you, if, if you want to eat something healthy and real quality food, then you might have to spend, uh, so at, at least I think the cheapest will be around 15 euros just one dish and then it can grow up to even uh, 25 or 30 euros uh, depending on what you want to order. The drinks are also gonna be fairly expensive if you are uh, drinking like a nice Belgian beer it's definitely gonna be around 5 euros maybe 4. The less uh, fancy Belgian beers they are gonna be like 3 euros I think. If you're gonna drink uh, cocktails it's gonna be around 10 to 12 euros, maybe even more. Uh, if you drink something non-alcoholic, that's 
I think that's usually around three or four euros. So public transport, um, it's a bit complicated in Belgium because there are, I think, four different companies responsible for public transport. There is one that is uh, for responsible for the Brussels area and it's it, uh, like the metro lines belong to it. So you have to get a card for that one. But if you want to use uh, buses that go to Flanders, then you have to buy a pass with a different company as well. So it's pretty complicated. Um, I would say uh, the, the tickets are fairly expensive, uh, especially compared to other uh, European countries. Um, I would say in Brussels, I, for me, it's okay because they have the metro and it runs like every five minutes. It's really good. Um, however, in Antwerp, that's not the case. It's it, like the service is a lot worse. Uh, there are always delays. There are always cancellations. The, the, the tram just doesn't show up and so on and so on. But let's get to the prices. So in Antwerp, uh, you have to pay for a monthly pass. If you are older than 25 years, then you have to pay around 50 euros for a monthly pass. If you want to buy a yearly pass, and again, you are older than 25, you have to pay around 350 euros. If you are younger than 25, the monthly pass will be 33 euros and the yearly pass will be 215 euros. To be honest, my recommendation is, at least if you are in Antwerp, that, that just don't buy the pass and uh, use the, the, the bike instead buy a, a, a bike for yourself uh, from these second-hand uh, online websites uh, or or you can uh, use the, the city bike system which only costs uh, 45 euros for a year and you can uh, use uh, the city bikes uh, at every station you can use them I think for 30 minutes you put it back to another station and it's a pretty good system uh, Brussels has the same system. It's called uh, something else, but it's also at this cheap. I think it's also around 40, 45 euros for a year. So in Belgium, you also have to pay health insurance separately. So it's not uh, just going to be uh, deducted from your salary. Um, these are called uh, mutualität uh, in Dutch. So these are organizations that provide health insurance. So you can compare uh, their offers. Um, they have like basic plans that only include like going to uh, your GP, but uh, they also have uh, plans that include like a dental plan or I don't know, gynecologist uh, and so on and so on. With some of them, you can also uh, get uh, glasses. Um, so you should check it out what you need. Uh, and you can always compare uh, the prices. I will put a link below. So at the moment, uh, I am uh, with uh, an organization I, and I pay uh, 25 euros per quarter uh, for health insurance. Um, I used to be with another one. Uh, with that, I paid 9 euros a month. So when you go to the doctor here, you will have to pay uh, for your visit. Um, I think the cheapest uh, possible is around 25 euros, but please correct me if I'm wrong. If you are going to a specialist like a, like a gynecologist or a, an, an, an ear for your ear or, or anything else, that's gonna cost you a lot more. Um, but with this uh, health insurance, uh, when you are uh, signed up uh, and paying health insurance to this mutuality, then you can uh, send them uh, your bills and they will uh, refund you uh, for uh, a big chunk of that uh, amount that you paid at the doctors. So correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Belgians, please, but I think there is also something like a social contribution that you have to pay every year. And if I remember correctly, it was around 100 or 110 euros every year. Uh, but please let me know if, if, it, if it's something different. 
Okay, talking about some leisure, if you want to go to the cinema, if you want to take some classes, if you want to do some sports, right? So let's talk about the cinemas. If you go to these big, big, big uh, cinemas uh, where you want to watch these big blockbusters that's gonna be a bit more expensive, anything around uh, 12 to 15 euros maybe, a bit even more expensive depending where you go. If you like more indie movies or, or art movies uh, and you like going to these smaller art cinemas, then it's gonna be cheaper, it's gonna be around 10 or 11 euros depending on where you go again. If you want to sign up to a gym and uh, take some classes there, it can be, the cheapest options can be 25-35, um, including group classes, I don't know, yoga, spinning, uh, kettlebell, stuff like that. Uh, you can also go to uh, fancier gyms, uh, these can be, I don't know, 65 per month. What you have to be really careful is that most gyms will ask you for a big commitment that you sign a contract for a year. Um, and if you don't like that gym, it's, <laughs> it's a bit uh, difficult to get out of it and you can get stuck in that contract for one year. Um, but I think they started offering more flexible options now. So you should check it out and you should check your contract uh, really well before signing anything. And it's the same with uh, sports clubs or dance classes or something like this. Usually they want a commitment for you and they want you to sign up for like an entire semester and so on. And that can cost uh, maybe around 120, 150 or even uh, more. So the sports club, for example, will always ask you for a membership and then you have to pay a membership fee, uh, I, I don't know, like 200 euros per year, and then you can uh, use uh, the facilities for free. Other uh, classes, to be honest, here in Antwerp, I found them pretty expensive. So I wanted to take singing lessons and they were like 60 euros an hour. And uh, the same with like a cooking class, it's like over 60 euros an hour. If you want to go to a concert, depending on how big an artist you want to see, um, you can go to concerts uh, for around uh, 10, 15 euros uh, a ticket, which is pretty great, but of course these are less well-known artists. So if you want to see a big star, then you will have to reach deep into your pocket. So learning the language, if you want to learn the local languages, um, for example Dutch, they offer you these really really cheap options, uh, which is really really great. Um, so for example, when I arrived in Brussels, I wanted to learn Dutch as well. I already spoke a bit of French, um, and but I wanted to learn Dutch as well and um, I signed up with this organization called uh, Haus van het Nederlands and they offered me an entire semester for only 45 euros so that's a pretty pretty good price um, if you are arriving in Antwerp you can uh, get uh, courses for the same good price um, from Atlas so they are this uh, integration uh, organization that help uh, immigrants uh, and experts um, and they can uh, they can hook you up with uh, one of the the adult education uh, programs that will offer you really cheap courses to learn the language if you want to learn another language that is not a lot of language i don't know spanish portuguese whatever uh, then um, as far as i know a course costs around 150 um, euros or even 200 if it's an entire year but I think that's also a pretty good offer you just have to look at these adult education sites you can also take classes with the University of Antwerp but that is pretty pretty expensive that, though it is really good and really intense but really expensive to buy some clothes um, I would say I'm not a big fashion person or clothes shopper to be honest so I 
can't help you a lot with there. I was uh, always uh, buying clothes with uh, these really uh, well-known uh, cheaper uh, clothes uh, shops. Uh, but you can find really good clothes in the Kringlowinkels or Kringwinkels. Um, these are kind of like the charity shops in the UK. These are secondhand clothes and I found some really, really nice uh, things there. Uh, you can also uh, download some apps. There are a variety of apps that um, are kind of like vintage clothing or selling your secondhand clothes or buying someone else's secondhand clothes and so on. So let's say you are moving here and most of the apartments that you can rent will be unfurnished, at least in Antwerp. In Brussels, I think you can find more options that are furnished. But let's say you have to have to buy furniture because you don't have anything, right? Um, so if you go to these really well-known uh, international furniture shops, uh, you can get cheap offers there. Um, I would say when we had to furnish uh, our super empty uh, rented apartment, I think it cost us around 2500 If you want to buy more, you know, nice furniture, like more unique, more whatever, uh, then it's gonna cost you a lot more, of course. And if you need to buy electronic appliances, they usually have them in the, in the rental uh, places. So the, the kitchen usually is equipped. Uh, they usually have a fridge, uh, sometimes a freezer, not always. Um, they usually have a, an oven or at least an oven that is uh, like also a microwave oven. It's, it was really weird for me. Sometimes they will also have a dishwasher but your kitchen will be fully equipped, so you don't have to worry about that. However, most of the apartments don't have a washing machine. So you will either have to buy one for yourself or uh, go do your laundry uh, in these laundromats on the corner. Um, what you have to know is that it's gonna be more expensive if you add it up. Um, I remember I was uh, I was only using the smaller washing machines in the laundromats, but it already cost four euros just for one wash. And then if you want to dry them, that's also an extra I think two euros. And sometimes it will uh, eat up your your uh, your coins and so on and so on. So I think it's just better to to buy a washing machine. So what I can tell you is if you go to uh, one of these really cheap electronics uh, shops. Um, then you can get some really good deals. Uh, for example, I bought a washing machine for 350 euros. And I would say if your employer uh, also pays uh, some of your benefits in uh, Ecoshex, then you should wait until you get those because uh, you, can, you can use those uh, to buy uh, electronics like an A++++ or already like a really nice energy efficient uh, washing machine. Of course, if you're gonna need a better washing machine, if you want a washing machine that also is a dryer, that's gonna be more expensive. You will also have some extra costs. Uh, some of them you will have to only pay once, some of them you will have to pay monthly. So for example, if you are moving to an apartment that is on a higher floor, and the, the, the stairs are too narrow and you cannot fit your furniture through it, then you have to um, book the movers, of course, but you also have to ask them to bring something called a ladder lift, which is kind of like a, a truck and it has a, a, like a, a lift that will take your furniture uh, uh, up uh, to the, your floor but through the window that's something that's gonna cost you extra you also have to reserve the parking space in front of your building and that's also gonna cost you extra your uh, landlord landlady land person might want to do an inventory themselves but sometimes or most of them will uh, will hire an external company who will come to the apartment and document the state of everything, take pictures of everything. And you will have to split the fee of this uh, external company between yourself 
and the owner of the apartment. And if you need a parking space, uh, if you have a car, um, in some uh, apartment buildings it is possible to, to rent one. And I would say that's gonna cost you around 150 euros extra in a month. So these were my 10 points for today based on my own experiences. Let me know if you agree, let me know if you have a different experience. Um, let me know if you would uh, like to hear about some other topics uh, about Belgium or some other countries. Um, I will try to make uh, more videos um, about Belgium but also about other Euro European countries. And let me know if you liked the video, um, if you did, uh, please hit the like button. And if you are interested in this content, then uh, you can also subscribe to my channel. I will post videos every week. Thank you very much for watching and see you next week.